Picture this. A perfect world for rats. Unlimited food, cozy nests, no predators. Sounds like paradise, right? But in one chilling experiment, this utopia turned into a nightmare. Rats started eating each other. Mothers devoured their pups. Gangs tore through cages and society collapsed into chaos. This is the story of the experiment that turned rats into cannibals. And trust me, it's not just about rats, it's about us. Stick around, because this tale will haunt you. Before we dive into this twisted experiment, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Because this story is about to bite, let's go! Let's rewind to the 1950s when a scientist named John B. Calhoun set out to build a rat paradise. At the National Institute of Mental Health he created what he called a rodent utopia. Picture it, a giant pen with everything a rat could dream of. Endless grain, water, nesting spots, no cats, no traps, just freedom to eat, breed and live. Calhoun wanted to see what happens when life's too easy. Spoiler, it wasn't pretty. Calhoun's early experiments starting in 1958 used Norway rats in a quarter-acre pen. At first they thrived. Babies were born. Families grew. But as the population soared, things got weird. By 1962 he was seeing behaviors that made his jaw drop. Rats weren't just fighting, they were feasting on each other. Imagine being a rat mom trying to protect your babies in a sea of chaos. These mothers didn't just lose their pups. They lost themselves. It's a gut punch. A story of survival crumbling under pressure. And it hits hard because we all know what it's like to feel trapped. Here's something you won't find in every science book. A 2017 analysis of Calhoun's notes revealed his rats weren't starving when they turned cannibal. Food was plenty. It was space, or the lack of it, that flipped the switch. Overcrowding didn't just stress them, it broke their minds. Calhoun didn't stop with rats. By 1968 he went bigger, creating Universe 25, a mouse utopia designed to house 3,840 mice. He started with just four breeding pairs, gave them everything and watched. For a while it was perfect. Mice multiplied, built nests, raised families, but then, it all fell apart. Universe 25 is where things got really dark. By day 315, the population hit 620, way below the max. But behaviors turned sinister, males fought to death, females ate their young and some mice dubbed the beautiful ones, just checked out, grooming themselves in isolation while the world burned. A 2018 study revisiting Universe 25 found that cannibalism spiked not from hunger but from social collapse. Mothers ate pups because stress hormones like cortisol surged, shutting down their nurturing instincts. It's like their brain said, no hope, no care. The beautiful ones break my heart. They survived by shutting down, escaping into themselves. It's not just cowardice, it's loss, pure and raw. They remind me of people who retreat when life gets too heavy and that's a story we all feel. But here's where it gets crazier. These mice didn't just eat each other. They formed gangs that terrorized the weak. Wanna see how bad it got? Stay with me. Calhoun coined a term for this chaos, the behavioral sink. It's when animals choose to overcrowd even when space exists and it spirals into violence. In Universe 25, mice crammed into central pens leaving others empty. Why? Social pressure, dominance, fear, 
sound familiar? The sink wasn't just overcrowding, it was society breaking. Dominant males hoarded the best spots, leaving others to fight for scraps. Females stopped mating, turned on their pups. By day 560, cannibalism was normal. The population peaked at 2,200, then crashed. By day 600, no babies survived. A 2020 paper in Social Science History dug into Calhoun's data and found the sink wasn't just physical crowding, it was psychological. Too much social contact fried their brains. One rat could handle 12 interactions a day, but in Universe 25 they faced hundreds. This isn't just horror, it's tragedy. These rats were smart social creatures like us. They wanted to belong, to thrive. But when the world turned against them, they lost who they were. It's a mirror to our own struggles and it stings. But what if the cannibalism wasn't the worst part? What if the real terror was what these rats became? The answer's coming and it's wild. As Universe 25 collapsed, the beautiful ones stood out. These mice didn't fight, didn't mate, they just groomed, ate and hid. They looked perfect, but uh, they were broken. Meanwhile, the rest turned into monsters. Cannibal gangs roamed, eating anything, even the living. By day 704, Universe 25 was a ghost town. No births, no hope. The last mice died out, surrounded by food. Calhoun called it the first death, not of the body, but of the spirit. The cannibalism wasn't hunger, it was despair. A 2019 article in the uncovered Calhoun's private logs. He noted that the beautiful ones had sky-high stress hormones, just like the cannibals. They weren't calm, they were paralyzed by fear, locked in survival mode. The beautiful ones aren't villains, they're survivors, clinging to what little control they had. It's like someone hiding from a toxic world, hoping to outlast it. Their story is not just sad, it's uh, a warning about what pressure does to us all, but here's the twist. Calhoun thought we could end up like these rats. Is humanity headed for its own behavioral sink? The answer might, well, freak you out. Calhoun didn't just study rats. He was obsessed with us. He believed Universe 25 was a warning. Overcrowding, stress, and social overload could push humanity into a behavioral sink. In the 1970s, his work fueled fears of urban collapse, with cities labeled rat cities in the press. But here's where it gets real. A 2021 study and found that crowded cities don't always breed violence, but social isolation does. People in packed apartments, glued to screens, feel like those beautiful ones cut off while surrounded by others. A 2017 experiment at UCLA tested stress in crowded human settings. They found cortisol spikes, like those in Calhoun's mice. When people felt trapped, not just physically, but socially, it's not space, it's connection that keeps us sane. We've all felt that loneliness in a crowd, that urge to shut down or lash out. But unlike those rats, we can choose connection, rebuild what's broken. It's a fight for survival, not against each other, but for each other. So are we doomed to eat each other like those rats, or is there hope? The next part's a game changer. Calhoun's work didn't end with Universe 25. Scientists today are digging deeper, testing what saves rats from the sink. Spoiler, it's not more space, it's meaning. Enriched environments, think toys, social groups, cut cannibalism and stress in lab rats. A 2019 study at Tufts University found that giving breeder mice a gel supplement slashed pup cannibalism by 40%. Why? 
It eased stress, gave mums a sense of control. It's not just food, it's feeding like life's worth living. Here's a weird one. A 2020 experiment in showed rats in crowded cages stopped eating each other when given puzzles to solve. Mental stimulation rewired their brains, calming the chaos. Imagine that for humans, these rats teach us something profound. Purpose saves us. When life feels pointless, we break, rat or human, but give us a reason to keep going and we fight to be better. That's the hope Calhoun missed, but what's next? Are we building our own Universe 25 or breaking free? The final twist is coming. Calhoun died in 1995, but his warning lives on. Are we heading for a human behavioral sink? Social media packed cities, endless noise. It feels like Universe 25 sometimes. But science says we're not rats. We can adapt, connect, create. A 2023 study and found that community programs like urban gardens cut stress in crowded cities by 25%. Unlike rats, we build our world. We decide if it's a utopia or a cannibal's cage. One last gem. Kowloon tried a final experiment in 1974, forcing rats to cooperate for food. It worked. Cannibalism dropped. A 2022 paper confirmed it. Shared goals make rats less vicious, maybe that's our blueprint. We're not doomed to eat each other. Every time we help, love or dream, we're fighting the sink. It's not about space, it's about heart. That's what makes us human. So, that's the experiment that turned rats into cannibals. A story of collapse but also of hope. Those rats showed us the worst of what pressure can do but we're not them. We can build better. What's your take? Are we heading for a sink or a new utopia? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this blew your mind, smash that like button, share it with your crew, and subscribe for more wild stories. Next time we're diving into, until then keep fighting the sink.